Hello and welcome back to Virtual SQL Bits event. My name is Mahesh Balija and I am a Senior Cloud Solution Architect at Microsoft. My specialty is into data, AI and IoT. I work closely with Microsoft partners and help them build and deploy solutions onto Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform. I have over a decade of experience in building and deploying solutions using big data and data science, IoT and artificial intelligence to name a few. I have worked across various industry verticals and in this session, I will be running a most comprehensive demo demonstrating some of the compelling features of Azure Synapse Analytics by taking a fictitious customer example and a real world scenario. Just relax, sit back and get ready to witness some of the key features of Azure Synapse Analytics. Welcome back again. Hello and welcome back. My name is Mahesh Balija and I am a Senior Cloud Solution Architect at Microsoft. My areas of specialization is into data and artificial intelligence. And in this session, I'm going to do an end-to-end -end demo around how to build modern data warehousing solutions on top of Azure using Azure Synapse Analytics, along with some of along with demonstrating some of the key features of the Synapse Analytics. Let's get started, folks. Let's, let's start by looking at some of the key capabilities and a high-level overview of the Azure Synapse Analytics itself. Here is the quick definition about what is Azure Synapse Analytics. To give you a simple definition for the Synapse Analytics. We have combined the power of both big data platforms along with the data warehouses to provide a unified experience for various roles in an organization interacting with the data, such as data analysts, data scientists, data engineers, and even DevOps engineers as well. If I had to quickly pick a couple of uh, points from this definition, Synapse Analytics will give you unmatched time to insight. By giving you the ability to analyze the large scale data sitting on various different platforms, such as Azure Data Lake, Cosmos DB, or even the SQL Data Warehouse itself, which is now called as Azure Synapse. You can tap into the data sets no matter where the data lives, as well any kind of data, such as structured or unstructured data with Synapse Analytics, giving you the unmatched time to insight, helping the organizations to be able to take full potential of the data all underpinned by the power of blazing speed. You now have the ability to analyze petabytes of data, such as billions of records in an interactive manner at, at millisecond latencies. It is a single service giving you the end-to-end -end analytical capabilities no matter whatever the kind of data, such as relational or unstructured data sets. It's the evolution of the SQL Data Warehouse and hence combining both the power of the data, data warehouses along with the big data platforms is now called as Azure Synapse Analytics. Let's start looking at a, a typical architecture for any modern data warehouse implementation. You would, while working with 
any customer kind of scenario, whether it's a large enterprise or it's a small organization. You would, ha you would have to deal with data sets coming from various different data sources, such as disparate data sources, such as application logs coming from the applications, relational database data sets, such as transactional data coming from the relational databases, or the unstructured data sets, or even sometimes the third-party systems such as social media applications. You need to first ingest all the, these data sets coming from the disparate data sources into a centralized platform and have the ability to perform ETL or ELT-like operations to transform and enrich the data and land, create a logical data model so that it acts as a semantic layer supporting the visualization requirements, I mean the reporting requirements. So ingest, store, prepare and transform, and the serving layer. So this is kind of a common theme for implementing any modern data warehouse. Let's look how this can be implemented on Azure. You can leverage on the Azure Data Factory, which does three different things primarily. One being you can use Azure Data Factory to move the data from your on-premises data sources onto Azure or other cloud platforms such as AWS GCP onto Azure. Or you can also use the Data Factory to orchestrate the pipelines. So by when I say pipeline, essentially when you create ETL or ELT-like transformations, you need to someone, you need to have someone to orchestrate these pipelines, these workflows. You can use Azure Data Factory to schedule these workflows uh, on a timely basis, such as hourly schedules or daily or weekly and so on. Once you, uh, and last but not the least, Data Factory also offers you the ability to transform the data with UI-based transformations, which is called as mapping data flows. It, it has, it is designed to be low-code or no-code kind of technology, allowing non-programmers to be able to process large scale data sets through simple drag and drop like UI functionality. So once you ingest the data and process with the common kind of transformations within Data Factory, you can leverage on the Azure Databricks for complex transformation scenarios. For example, if you're working for a banking organization, you might have to implement a complex rule, business logic, to process the data. That's why you can leverage on the Databricks-like technology, which which has got which is underpinned by Spark, to be able to parallelize your processing logic. And use the SQL Data Warehouse, which is now called as Azure Synapse, to to create your semantic layer which would then be connected by your Power BI to be able to visualize the reports so that your technical and business users can tap into those intelligent visual analytics to be able to take actionable insights based on the reports. However, for most of the modern data warehouse scenarios today, with the integration of both the big data capabilities such as Spark and the SQL Data Warehouse combined together, you can build most of the modern data warehouse solutions just using Azure Synapse Analytics itself. And it has got native integration with Power BI as well so that your data analysts can build 
and publish those reports into Power BI surveys from within the Azure Synapse Analytics itself. Let's take a deeper look into Synapse Analytics. Let's take a bottom-up approach here. In the bottom, as you can see, you have Azure Data Lake Storage, which allows you to store petabyte scale datasets and can deal with any kinds of data, such as structured, semi-structured, or unstructured datasets, such as videos, images, or even audio files or text content. You can land any sort of data into Azure Data Lake Storage. Powered by enterprise-grade security, it allows you to define granular access control to the users accessing the data living on the Azure Data Lake Storage. You can have you can store petabyte scale datasets at at cheap costs. And it is also powered by the common data model. Common data model helps organizations to be able to easily integrate across different organ, across different applications by having the same semantics such as the common entities and the attributes defined per industries which also addresses to cater most of the reporting scenarios as well if you are adhering to the common data model and not just that you can also take advantage of any solution accelerators which are built on top of the common data model well, moving a little bit up. So with Synap within Synapse Analytics, now we have combined all those capabilities which I just mentioned for the Azure Data Factory into the Azure Synapse Analytics itself. So now you can all of a sudden can do the data ingestion, ETL and ELT like pro transformations which are UI-based transformations, as well orchestrate your pipelines from within the Synapse Analytics itself. And having the ability to both support SQL pools and the Spark pools, it gives a lot more flexibility for your SQL developers and the data engineers to be able to leverage on whichever the preferred technology uh, they are they are familiar with such as SQL developers can use SQL pools to process and analyze the data and the data engineers who are familiar with uh, technologies such as Spark they can leverage on the Spark Synapse Spark which is uh, which is powered by Apache Spark and you can create and deploy those transformations both the technologies are available on demand as well as pre-provisioned compute the on-demand one is particularly very exciting it allows your end users to be able to analyze the data without pre-provisioning any compute hence you will be charged based upon the amount of data you are processing using that on-demand compute and because it has got natively integration with Spark, it gives you the advantage of creating your transformations in various different languages, such as Python, .NET, Java, Scala, R, and SQL. And on the top, as you can see, you got Azure Synapse Analytics Studio, which is an integrated development environment available fully online for your end users to come and access the data sets and analyze those data sets. When I do the demo, you would see the power of the Azure Synapse Analytics Studio and how data engineers, data analysts, data scientists all can come together and work with a single integrated development environment. By combining all these different services, different capabilities, 
Now you got an added advantage as well, such as you can now simplify the security, management of the entire system, and having the ability to monitor and do the Metastore management as well into a single environment. Now, as you can see from this slide, compared to the previous slide, instead of working with various different technologies and fiddling with how to transform, how to exchange the data between those different systems, now all of a sudden, you got a much more simplified architecture, a single technology solving all the needs of your data platform. With that, I would like to quickly jump onto a demo. Just sit back and relax, folks. We are having a very, very exciting demo in a few minutes. Let me first set the context around the demo. Data is considered to be the oil are the core currency of many organizations. Retail is no exception. Data is considered as oxygen for the retailers today. Retailers have vast amounts, large volumes of data, but they face challenges in order to be able to maximize the full potential of the data sets. And one of the key challenges being data sitting in various different platforms and never being able to get all those data sets into a single platform. With Synapse Analytics, the core problem is solved as you now have the ability to work with the data pretty much where the data lives. But by doing so, now retailers can be able to bring in all those different data sets and be able to build operational and customer intelligence using those data sets, such as building the 360 degree view of the customer and generating the personalized recommendations for the customers would give an added advantage for the retailers. It also helps the business analysts to take actionable insights based upon actionable uh, actions based upon the intelligent insights. In this demo, we will be looking at two different platforms, especially the Dynamics 365 customer insights and the Synapse Analytics both powered by the common data model. Using Dynamics 365, we will bring the customer data and operational data will be managed by the Synapse Analytics. While our focus would remain on the Synapse Analytics for the scope of this session, folks. Let's understand why you need to leverage on Microsoft for your data and analytical needs. Firstly, it's very cost effective. It's compared to any other cloud vendor out there, the kind of performance and the simplicity and the ability to deal with those different data sets at very cheap price and the simplicity by combining the capabilities across different platforms, giving the access, giving the uh, various different roles to work on a single environment gives you additional advantage as well in terms of simplifying the architecture. Let's take a deeper look. In this demo, we will be landing the data from various different source systems, such as Using Synapse Analytics, we bring in the sales data, marketing, finance, and even streaming data, not just the batch data sets. We even collect the streaming data using Synapse Analytics. With the customer insights, we will bring in the additional customer data, such as point of sale, post data sets. 
web application data as well. And we combine both these data sets while working with the Synapse Analytics. Let's look at a couple of customer case studies before we dive into the demo. Bonnier Books, which is a Swedish publisher, they have leveraged on the Azure Synapse. Their key challenge was that their users use various different platforms to connect to their application. They wanted to give a unified experience across different devices by building user-based recommendations based upon the customer behavior. They have leveraged on the Azure Synapse Analytics. And another retailer scenario where they got various brick and mortar stores, they have installed IoT devices with which they collected the sensor data combined with the operational data, they are now able to do real-time recommendations for the users based upon the users looking onto the type of the product. And also it tells you how busy the different aisles are at any given point of time as well. Let's look into the de demo in detail. While you can't see most of this Power BI dashboard, while I start the demo, I will give you a detailed overview of what are those insights which are generated as part of the Power BI. However, our goal is basically we will build an entry and margin data warehouse solution for a fictitious retail customer. We will gather the batch datasets, real-time datasets, as well, we do predictive analytics on top of the data, such as when I say batch or historical data, we are dealing with the past data. When I say real-time data, such as the sensors data or the social media data sets, such as Twitter, we do real-time analytics using Azure Synapse. And along with these two data sets, we now build future analytics such as predictive analytics, which is empowering both the IT teams, data engineers, data scientists, and business analysts to take advantage of these petabyte scale data sets. The Synapse Analytics would give you an additional advantage to analyze billions of records in an interactive manner. Before we get, before we deep dive into the demo, let me give you some additional context as well. This retailer segmented the data across three different categories, such as Gen X, which Gen X customers, which are basically who are aged between 39 to 59 years, Gen Y users, which are who are also called as millennials who are aged between 22 to 20, 38 years old as you can see the years as well there and the gen z users who are born after 1998s who are less than 21 years old let's build the analytical capability around these different customer segments and see how we can take advantage of the Azure Synapse Analytics to take actionable, uh, to take intelligent, to understand the actionable intelligent insights. Let's start with the demo, folks. As part of the demo, I have used the Wide World Importers, which is a fictitious customer, and I have generated a Power BI dashboard using the Azure Synapse Analytics and the data coming from various different source systems, which we will explore in a minute. As you can see in this Power BI dashboard, I have created three different tabs. First, Campaign and the Customer Analytics, uh, which are visual insights generated from the historical or batch datasets. As you can see, there are some KPIs being part of this tab, such as campaign revenue versus target revenue, 
year over year growth, total revenue, number of customers, and so on. One of the interesting visuals is the net sales to millennials by fiscal years. As you would remember from the previous slide, millennials are being uh, the people who are aged between 22 to 38. We can see a steady decline for the millennials users for this customer in terms of the sales since the last three to four years. To give you a very good visual clue, I have taken various different years, but you could easily get these insights when there is a decline in the sales in the last two quarters or one. Once, let's understand what is the behavior which is changing, which is having the steady decline for the sales for the millennials. By using Azure Synapse Analytics, let's explore the data sets and find out more about that. And as you can see, there are various different visuals as part of this dashboard. Not just the visuals coming from the batch data sets, as you can see for the real-time Twitter analytics, these visuals are generated in real time based upon the Twitter data. And not just Twitter data, as you can see, I'm even pulling the data from the sensors from the brick and mortar stores and generated few visuals in real time using the Power BI dashboards and the Synapse Analytics. And last but not the least, we have even created predictive analytics such as product recommendations and the predictive analytical capability for the stores and store related analytics as well. Let's use the Azure Synapse Analytics and see how you could make all this possible. When you create the Azure Synapse Analytics from within the Azure portal, portal.azure.com, you would be able to launch the Synapse Analytics workspace, which looks like this. In this demo, from the homepage, you can be able to access various different tabs such as ingest, explore, analyze, and visualize. Let's start with ingest. If I select ingest, I can now configure a data source as a source system to ingest the data from. I can hit next. I can see the existing configurations or existing data sources where the data is being ingested currently. I even have the ability to create new connections as well from the screen. If I select create new connection, there are a bunch of tabs here. Let's select database. Assume that I have the data residing on an on-premises Oracle database. I can now select Oracle as a source database and select that option. You need not have to write any code. Instead, you just have to configure the settings for your underlying data database. To give you a, a sample kind of overview, I'll just select continue. As you can see, I need to configure the host port connection type and few other settings for me to be able to connect to the source database. Along with that, you also need to select an integration runtime. This is very important. For the integration scenarios, there are three different integration runtimes. One is self-hosted integration runtime, which is often used when your data sources are running on your on-premises data centers. You can use SSIS integration runtime, especially when you are uplifting, uh, lifting and shifting your SSIS packages onto the cloud. Alternatively, you can also use Azure integration runtime when the data sources are coming are as part of the Azure cloud. So depending upon your scenario, you, you select the appropriate integration runtime and configure those settings so that the Synapse Analytics can automatically be able to connect to that data source 
and then pull the data and ingest the data into the destination, into the sync system. Let me show you this with a working example. We got various different hubs here, such as Data Hub, Develop Hub, and Orchestrate, Monitor, and Management Hubs. Let's start with Orchestrate Hub. I would like to quickly show you how you need to configure the source and sync for your pipelines. So I am in the pipeline view. As part of this pipeline view, let's select one of these pipelines such as SAP to ADLS. So we are, the source is the SAP HANA database and the destination is Azure Data Lake Storage. In this pipeline, let's quickly review various different activities. We got copy data activity as part of this pipeline where we have selected given some configuration such as the name for this activity and, and various different settings. Underneath the source, I got the source data set. This is the linked service which I have created previously connecting to the SAP HANA database, which has got all the connection related configurations and integration runtime and so on if required. I have written a query. You can select a table from the database or you can manually read the data using a query as well. As you can see, I have written a query such as select star from demo DB from fact sales data table and few other settings as well. Sync being the Azure data lake storage and syncing the data into data lake storage into a CSV file format, for example. And there is a data flow which is configured as part of this pipeline. Let's review this data flow carefully. So we can go on into the develop hub. Underneath that, we can find out all those different transformations which are part of this mapping data flow. So you can even go into the settings and find out which data flow has been configured and so on. And if there are any required parameters, you can pass those parameters as part of this data flow as well, as part of your pipeline. Let's take a step back and first start with the data hub. Underneath the data hub, you got two tabs. One is workspace and the other is the linked services. Underneath the workspace, as you can see, there are a bunch of databases configured, one coming from Azure Synapse Data Warehouse SQL pool. So it's from the SQL pools, which is also Azure Synapse Data Warehouse as well. Underneath that, you can find the bunch of tables as part of that data, data, database. Why? We can even explore and analyze those tables quickly from here. Apart from the pre-provisioned SQL pools, you also have the SQL on-demand pools as well, where you have got some bunch of external tables. These external database tables could come anywhere from something like Azure Data Lake Storage, for example. Underneath the linked sources, there are various different uh, uh, source systems here. Let's start with Azure Blob Storage as one of its sources. So you can configure containers which are part of the Blob Storage as one of your so data source into Azure Synapse Analytics. And Cosmos DB being HTAP database, hybrid transactional and analytical processing database. You can now connect to Cosmos DB directly using something called as Azure Synapse Link and work with that data set as if, it's, as if it is natively available within the Azure Synapse Analytics. You can see a bunch of databases and the tables underneath those databases coming as part of the Cosmos DB. And not to mention Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 is one of the primary data sources as well. One of the interesting facts here is you can now actually connect to multiple storage accounts and work with the data sets coming from those different multitude of storage accounts. As you can see here, there are a bunch of storage accounts 
with different uh, files such as uh, if I select sales data we can find some bunch of files underneath that are let's say Twitter data there are some bunch of files which are available or stored as parquet file format parquet file format being one of the industry standard input formats for large-scale data processing folks it gives you the schematic view and columnar kind of capabilities on top of the unstructured data on the files flat files and not just that you can see the data coming from sap salesforce uh, and various other databases as well which is residing on the azure data lake storage gen 2. So now that we have seen blob storage, Cosmos DB and data lake store, there are some interim kind of data sets produced as part of your integration pipelines as well. You can create new uh, data sources using this data hub as well, like I showed you before. Moving on to the develop hub, which is more interesting. Now that we understood what all databases or data sources you could connect with from within Synapse Analytics, let's understand how you can seamlessly work with that data. Imagine you are a SQL developer or you are a data engineer with SQL background and you wanted to analyze billions or billions of records or petabytes of data by writing simple PSQL-like queries. You can use SQL script. Underneath the SQL scripts, I have written some bunch of scripts already. Let's start exploring some of the queries from here. I got the first SQL script where I have written a query to get the count of the records from a large table, which is sales table. Let's run this query and see how many, how much, how many records this particular table has. I have ran the query and the query has returned within some milliseconds as you can see and the total count the number of records as part of the this table is over 30 billion records imagine any other data warehouse in order to get the count it would be in the order of double digit kind of seconds but here with synapse analytics with blazing speeds you can immediately get those results pretty much interactively with single digit latencies. And here I have written another complex query which is performing joins, complex jo inner joins, left outer joins, and as well doing group by operations on 30 billion records. When I run this query, the results are pretty much mind-boggling as you can see it has returned the results almost instantaneously for the first time when i ran this query it has taken a single digit seconds latency but however because the results are cached now i can see those results instantaneously and look at uh, the other script where now from within the synapse I can even analyze semi-structured data such as JSON datasets using JSON extractor where I can not only just select the uh, columns from the JSON raw JSON tables rather I can even perform some interesting analytics as well by writing some complex queries using the raw JSON tables within the synapse analytics from the JSON capability. So I, as you can see, there are a bunch of columns being extracted from the Rajason data. And interestingly, we do not charge anything additional for the security features within the Azure Synapse Analytics compared to other data warehouses out there. In Azure Synapse Analytics, security comes built in where you can, for example, apply column level security, row level security, have the da dynamic data masking, have the ability to configure the role-based access control and so on. Let's have a quick look at one of these security features as well. Let's imagine column level security. 
suppose that you have a table with some sensitive data set, sensitive columns, such as PII data, personally identifiable information for the end users, or even something like revenue information per region, right? So this is all sensitive data. Depending upon your role, you may want to control who can have access to those columns and who cannot. Here, I'm just, for the sake of uh, an example, I'm selecting some top 100 rows from the campaign analytics, which has got some bunch of columns with some sensitive information as well, such as revenue column is part of this table. And now let me show you how we can control the access to these columns based upon the rules. For example, I have created two different types of users uh, uh, one being CEO and one being data analyst uh, confined to a specific region, right? And now I'm giving access control for the columns. I'm giving, I'm setting the column level security for this particular data analyst to a specific region. So now that I have provisioned the access let's try to access the data for this particular user. So I'm executing as a data analyst now, and I'm, I'm trying to retrieve the data from the campaign analytics table, which has instantly thrown me an er error message saying that I do not have access to this column called revenue. And now all of a sudden, instead of accessing the table using select star, the users can still be able to retrieve the other columns by manually configuring those columns as part of the select query. Except the revenue column, I can now be able to see as a data analyst the rest of the columns. For the CEO, I can grant access to pretty much all the columns, which would then allow me to query this campaign analytics table and retrieve the revenue column as well, as you can see here. So this demo clearly shows how you can give provision column level security depending upon the roles. Similarly, you could also perform row level security where imagine users are coming from a region like UK, they can only have access to that, the data specific to that particular region and they may not be able to access the data coming from the other subsidiaries such as France or other regions. Right? With dynamic data masking, it also helps you to mask the data for the, depending upon the kind of role as well. Okay? With, with specific characters. And you can also now run the SQL on demand as well. So far, what I have showed you is basically it is using the SQL pools, which are pre-provisioned compute as part of your SQL uh, Synapse data warehouse. Now with SQL on demand, you have the ability to run the queries without pre-provisioning any compute prior to this. This gives you an added advantage not not to not to uh, write the resources which are configured as part of your pre-provision pools. Rather, those ad hoc queries can be run through on on demand compute as well, such as like this one. So this is using on demand compute on demand SQL pools in order to run this complex SQL query or queries. So that kind of proves how you can work with the SQL pools pre-provision and on-demand SQL pools and also showcases the power uh, the Synapse Analytics brings for running the complex queries at blazing speeds as well with, with this acuity. Let's have a quick look at how a, a data engineer who's coming from this park kind of background, how he or she can be able to write create ETL uh, transformations using Spark-like technology, right? So 
I got I created a notebook uh, which is campaign analytics which which prepares the data which loads the campaign and marketing data sets into a spark data frame and can process those data sets within the spark as well as you can see I, I created a data frame connecting to underlying storage and then displaying some sample data set as it would look like as part of this notebook and then you can see that uh, I'm doing some complex transformations using this park itself. While working with the notebooks, you would then have the ability to switch between various different languages as well, such as Python, .NET, and so on. Not just the data processing capability. Now, you can also build predictive models using something like Azure ML, which is integrated into Synapse Analytics. Azure ML itself brings a lot more additional capabilities such as Auto ML, uh, res building responsible AI and so on. With integration of Azure ML into Synapse Analytics, you can be able to easily import the Python SDK of Azure ML as part of your Spark notebooks and then do the, do the model training as on model deployment using the Azure ML. As shown in this example, I'm using uh, auto ML capabilities of the Azure ML, which would then automatically produce some bunch of uh, all that you need to do as a data scientist is need to tell what is the type of uh, problem you're trying to solve, such as is it a classification problem or is it a regression problem? Are others and configure the accuracy you are looking for as part of this model creation and the AutoML will does the uh, hard part by identifying the right models uh, right algorithms and tuning the hyperparameters as well coming up with the best model as you can see in this example I'm just telling what is the type of problem I'm trying to solve and what is the accuracy I'm looking for, the primary metric, and so on. With these bunch of configurations, the AutoML can then be able to identify or come up with the best performing model for this data set and for this problem statement, which I would then can be used this model to do the batch predictions or the real-time predictions as well, depending upon my scenario, right? No. I just showed you how you can transform the data with Spark within Synapse Analytics and combine the power of Azure ML for the data science kind of scenarios and build complex machine learning models. As well, uh, you can do some interesting uh, data exploration or data analysis related uh, aspects as well. For example, I can connect to Cosmos DB from within my Spark notebook and retrieve the data sets from within these Cosmos DB tables as if it is native to Azure Synapse Analytics. Isn't it really exciting folks that you have now the ability to work or connect with any data sets magically and work with any kind of language of your choice, either Spark or SQL, if it is Spark, different languages as well, along with data science capabilities. So now that I showed you both SQL capabilities and the notebooks capabilities, let's review some of the data flows. If you are not uh, good with programming, let's say, you want to build your transformations pretty much with low code or no code kind of capability, that's where you can leverage on the data flows where you, with simple drag and drop kind of functionality, you can build and deploy complex transformations as well. Such as in this example, I'm ingesting the data from SAP HANA and performing some general kind of aggregations and transformations and deploying the final result into something like Azure Data Lake Storage. The first activity, as you could see here, this is connecting to SAP HANA as a data source. And then the second activity, which is taking the last five years data, which means it is filtering the data based on the date. 
to get the last five years data. It's a filter transformation. In the derived column transformation, I am building the calculated columns from the existing columns. You can do like aggregations, you can do joins uh, and many other things as part of this UI based transformations capability from mapping data flows. There are a bunch of examples which I have written as well. The last uh, activity which would then persist the results back into Azure data, data Lake storage. Okay. So now that we understood the power of the mapping data flows as part of the Synapse Analytics, if you are a data analyst, you might want to build some interesting dashboards or reports using the Power BI and publish it to the Power BI service so that users can get access to your reports and dashboards. Underneath the Power BI, as you can see, uh, let's take a, a sample report as an example. I got CDP Vision demo, under which I have pre I have created a visual, which actually shows uh, the the sales across different uh, um, entities. While uh, the, this, while you may not be able to see this, but uh, you can understand that you know, you can be able to build these visuals, right? To give you a quick example, you can just drag, select one of these visuals which you wanted to create. For example, I would select something like a card type and then add a column to that. So which would then you know, generate a new visual as part of your report such as sales, for example. So you can go on and create your visuals, uh, your reports. As you can see in this example, I have taken, I have built a report which is using the data over 30 billion records within Power BI itself, folks. And these reports I can easily publish to the Power BI service and make it available to the end users. Whether it's a technical user, whether it's a business user, all of those users can get benefited from these reports. So now that we understand how you can use the Develop Hub, work with pre-provisioned SQL pools to on-demand SQL pools, work with the notebooks using Spark with to data flows through the UI-based transformations to the Power BI. Let's review the the pipeline. So we have actually seen the pipeline, so I will skip it for now. Pipelines are essentially kind of configuration, configuring the workflows uh, to run on a, on a schedule basis. Why? Right? You got the monitoring capabilities where you can see uh, the existing pipelines. And if, if any pipelines have failed, you can also check what, what, what is the root cause for that failure and can be able to repair those, those workflows as well. I mean, those pipelines as well. You can even configure new triggers, either time-based triggers or database triggers as part of this. And last but not the least, you can even manage the security such as access control from within this uh, Synapse Analytics workspace. Isn't it so exciting, folks, that whether you are a data engineer, whether you are a data scientist, or you are a data analyst, no matter who you are, as long as you have something to do with the data, Synapse Analytics has the most comprehensive capability to address your needs. Hence, I like to call Synapse Analytics Generate Synapse Analytics produces data geniuses. The reason I prefer to say that is it gives you the ability to deal with any kind of workload. Whether you are a data engineer or wanted to build, enhance your skills to build and deploy machine learning models, it has everything combined in a single platform and hence making you as a data genius when you work with the Azure Synapse Analytics. 
Thank you for attending this session, folks. I will look forward for your feedback.